Good afternoon, everybody. I'm super delighted to welcome you to this panel on Edge IoT Framework Flavors. And we'd like you to walk away being able to choose your flavor based on the merits of each of these. Uh, I am a principal engineer at Intel who has worked on open source solutions for machine learning, IoT Edge and the cloud. And our wonderful panelists today are Yin Ding. Hi everyone. So he's a senior architect at Pure Storage. He's one of the founders of Cube Edge. He brings cloud, container and virtualization expertise. The next member on our panel is Enia Ochlo. He works on Kubernetes, Cube Admin, and K3S. He's been an analyzing resource utilization of these solutions using some software called KBench. We have Faye Gore. He's a senior staff engineer at Alibaba working on the container service team. He's focused on automation, multi-tenancy, and edge computing. He's an open year developer. Last, but not least, we have Itohan Uppovan, who's a software engineer at Salesforce. So she has a lot of expertise in working on distributed systems, their design, development, and test. Today, she'll be representing K3S. So our first question to the panelists is, what is the chief design principle of your project? When did you launch it? And what is the size of your community? Faye, would you please go first? Uh, sure. So uh, when we develop an open yard, our design principle is to try to maximum the uh, Kubernetes extensibility to try to resolve our cache uh, edge use cases just using Kubernetes add-ons. So open yard was open sourced in uh, May last year, and it uh, we donated it to uh, CNCF in the fourth quarter last year, and it, it is now a sandbox project of CNCF. Uh, we have, a, because we just started the project uh, not a long time ago, so the entire community is still in a, a small size, uh, as I can say. We have about uh, you know, 40 com, uh, contribu contributors, um, but we are working very hard to expand the community. Yin, would you please go next? Yeah, sure. Uh, I work with uh, Kuba Edge, so the motivation we developed this project is we want to simplify the edge application deployment and the lifecycle management. So better with the native Kubernetes API. So the design we have is a solve the networking problem between the cloud and the edge and to manage the edge node and the application on behalf of the developers. And they can run all this uh, edge node application autonomously on the edge node. So for this project, Kube Edge, we open sourced it in November 2018, and we donated to CNCF on March 2019. And we enter as a CNCF sandbox project in May 2019, and we graduated from sandbox and into uh, incubation in uh, September 2020. So currently we are a incubation project of CNCF. Uh, since we launched this Kube Edge, we already have a uh, good community. We get uh, more than 4,000 GitHub stars, uh, more than 1,000 forks, and we have uh, more than 300 contributors from uh, more than three different organizations. And we also have uh, more than 20 uh, industry adopters. So it's a very uh, organically healthy uh, community now. Thank you. Itohan? Yes, yeah, so K3S was launched in 2019, and the main design principle is to be a Kubernetes distribution. So, you know, like we have Linux distributions, it's still Linux. In the same way, K3S is still Kubernetes, but it was designed for the edge, so it's meant to be lighter weight. So you can do everything you can do on regular Kubernetes, but it's quicker, it's um, less, it's not as heavy. And it's just easy to run. You can spin up a cluster in minutes, less than 10 minutes, really. Awesome. Enia? So Kubernetes was uh, uh, brought to life with the idea of declaratively 
uh, managing containerized applications. So it's basically a container orchestrator and it was launched or it was open sourced in 2014. And it's been hugely successful. It's, I believe it's actually one of the most popular open source projects out there with over 3000 uh, contributors on GitHub. So yes. So you have the largest cloud here. <laughs> oh, I missed the number of contributors. There are about 40 contributors in K3S. Aha, uh -huh. so you can go head to head with Faye, you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I was thinking in our next question, we think about an edge IoT application. So, and in that context, how does each of your solutions, you know, vary or work with it? I was thinking, what if I had a surveillance app? I just want to monitor maybe traffic, cars coming, going, or which cars. And I wanted to deploy it at the level of like every traffic intersection across a state, something as big as Texas. Um, with that in mind, could each of you tell me how your solution would work? Faye, would you please go first? Uh, sure. So, um... First of all, because OpenYard is just a Kubernetes extension, uh, it doesn't break the API capability. So, so all the management stuff we can use leverage or traditional Kubernetes workload to manage the application like 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 uh, people usually do. Um, but for for cases like this, um, we introduce uh, another level of abstraction, which we we call node pools, which in the sense that we can kind of group you fit the closer nodes in the node pool and, uh, and deploy your application for that node pool only. So that can solve some kind of the problem uh, for the scalability. Um, but other than that, uh, uh, it should, people should just uh, choose whatever they, way that they are favored to run those applications, those applications in those you know, edge nodes. So Faye, do you see them having multiple clusters and then orchestrating this traffic application on multiple of these edge clusters or a single large cluster, especially given that like Kubernetes has some like 5,000 node limit? Yeah, I think I think that's, if you go to the scale, like like, like you mentioned, probably multi-cluster is, is the right direction to do. Um, but uh, for now, OpenAI doesn't target for that. It is still targeted for single, uh, uh, a single uh, Kubernetes control plan. So uh, we do have limitation for the number of node support. Um, but uh, that, that is something that we see, um, we, we are trying to resolve in the future, but not for now. Thank you. Yin? Uh, thank you. Uh, for Kube Edge, so it's easy to deploy a Edge application. So uh, for your cases, uh, what your uh, Kube Edge is fully compatible with native Kube, uh, Kubernetes APIs. So the deployment is, has nothing different from native cloud applications. What do you do? It just do Kuber control API, uh, uh, deploy or apply. And what the difference is you should label the node you want to deploy your application. Then you can use the, the normal method to have a node selector or other selectors to select where do you want to deploy this edge application. And so uh, from the developer point of view or operator, uh, operational engineer point of view, it's no different to, uh, for you to deploy a cloud application versus a edge application. And for multi-clusters, actually in one of our su successful industry adopters, they have uh, 50,000 nodes. So it's way over one Kubernetes cluster can handle. What they do is they leverage some commercial version of uh, uh, something like a Kuber derived from the Kuba Fed uh, project, or you can have your other applications because Kuba Edge don't touch the control plane of a Kubernetes. We just extend what's running on the Edge node. So for the user, they can pick any multi Kubernetes cluster control plane, and the Kuba Edge should. Uh, I cannot see 0% different, uh, I mean change, but it's very less change. It should be most, in most cases, seamlessly compatible with multiple Kubernetes cluster control plane. 
Cool. Itohan? So uh, it depends on scale. I know you said it's a, a large scale, but for a smaller scale, you could use a single cluster and use something like daemon sets and use apply. But for a larger scale, I'll see, I'll, I'll see myself using a single node cluster at different locations and using a commercial multi-cloud orchestrator. I know there are several multi-cloud orchestrators, so maybe something like Cloudify to manage the different single node clusters. Oh, excellent. Thank you. Ania? So it's going to be very similar to uh, K3S. Uh, in this case, it's Kubernetes. So for starters, I'm going to bring up my cluster using KubeADM as opposed to uh, a different solution. Then yes, it depends if it's, if the surveillance application is, if the scale is that of a data center, then yes, you can deploy it using uh, some of the existing uh, Kubernetes components like uh, daemon sets. But obviously we're talking about a larger scale here. So yes, we'll probably need something else that's going to manage uh, the control plane. So it's, you need a, a different orchestrator for the orchestrator, which is Kubernetes. So yes, you'll probably need something else on top to do the management. Cool. So we do want these apps going at scale and especially that's the whole thing about edge and low latency and not having to send all your data everywhere. So cool. So it looks like we have time to get a few more questions in. So I'm going to sneak some in. Uh, Anya, you had mentioned that you work on KBench. Could you please tell us something about what KBench is and what kind of resource utilization K3 versus K8, that kind of stuff? So yeah, uh, KBench is an open source framework that's used to uh, benchmark the performance of uh, Kubernetes clusters. Out of the box, you are going to get metrics like uh, pod API call latencies, deployment API call latencies, and uh, service API call latency. So it basically lets you know when you make API calls, how long they take. So from one cluster to the other, you can get that information from KBench. Yeah, it's it's basically a Kubernetes benchmarking tool that I actually enjoyed using. So is there any difference in these latencies when you compare them against K3S versus K8S? Keeping all things equal, like the same hardware, the same networking, the same number of nodes? Yes. So yes, you do have, you do have, uh, you have discrepant, not discrepancies, you have differences. So in the case of, uh, in the case of K3S, you could potentially have, it's not, it's not uniform across the board, right? So when you're deploying a pod using the pod API uh, call latency metric inside of uh, 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 KBench, you could potentially have a, a pod being created at a higher latency inside of that metric. So when you're creating a pod using the pod operations inside of Q, uh, afforded to you by QTTL, you could actually create a pod quicker inside of uh, K3S, but go to K8S and it's created not as quickly, but same pod creation operation when you're using a deployment to create the pods, the reverse could potentially be the case. So it's not uniform. It depends it's on what, okay. yeah, it's not consistent. It depends on the operation. So that also brings us to a different uh, question of what's important to the potential. Different person. metrics. Yes, who's trying to create all that. part of this panel to get yeah. to help you choose your flavor. Yin and Fei, I mean, in all your experiences with IoT Edge applications, do you see these pods coming and going? I mean, changing a lot? Are, are the Edge IoT pods typically stable? Uh, for Kube Edge, in my user cases, normally it's stable. So when 
they deploy a application to an edge node. So they typically connect to the sensors, right? So right. when the temperature or, so they, they stay there and, and report the status or do some data aggregation and report to the center cloud. And the, the main thing is we worry about, it's maybe you're going to ask, but uh, the application may be, I mean, crushed or the, the things, the, the uh, one important thing is that this edge application can run autonomously, independently, even the network is not connected, you cannot report your data back to the central cloud, you, you should still uh, work, work fine. So that's the, in our design principle. So we derive from the Kubelet to make sure we can manage, with, manage the edge application lifecycle on the edge side. So make sure it's auto Autonomous. restart or, yeah. or also handle this OTA update, the rolling update, the same as the Kubernetes do. But uh, if you want to, I mean, the audience want to learn more detail, um, re, uh, you can, they can contact me or the community or welcome to look at our code. Cool. Fee? Yeah, very similar to uh, this point. So uh, OpenAI uh, are re uh, resolving the autonomy problems, very classic uh, edge uh, autonomy problem like uh, what Kubi Edge does. Uh, we cannot cache data in the vector mode. So in terms of the uh, uh, chain rate, again, I, I don't. I, I, most of our use cases we use deployment, so you can you can treat it as low running workload. Uh, although we have use cases to support like AI kind of thing, we have job kind of thing. Um, but I would say um, uh, the channel rate is still low. So um, yeah, so um, so it, and and from the implementation perspective, uh, all all the trick that we play is kind of proxy networking uh, between the Kubernetes to the API server. So you can assume me, you can you, you can imagine there are uh, one or two more hops, and uh, which may may influence the latency. But I would say. Uh, people should, should no, normally won't be aware of those impact. Yeah, and like both of you said, I mean, there's not much churn in the pods as opposed to a normal data center. So things are pretty stable. So the latency to launch a pod is not that significant and things are awesome. So uh, my next question is, what are you each excited about in terms of features or something in terms of development happening on your specific project roadmap. Uh, with that, Faye, would you please go first? Oh yeah, sure. Um, so in the OpenAI side, uh, in short, we have two main ongoing efforts. The first one is uh, uh, OpenAI doesn't come up with native uh, um, management or design to managing the devices. Uh, inside, instead, we are integrating with another open source project, which is called Edge Foundry, which is, uh, is a professional managing the devices on the Edge environment. So we are working on integration, integrating with Flow system. So uh, the design has been done and uh, we have designed all the interfaces and the supposed integration should be done in this quarter. So that's number one. The second one, the second problem we want to resolve is making the, uh, 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 the, 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 the edge node uh, autonomy to your next level, uh, instead of handling a single node restarts, uh, we want to even handle the case that if a node is, is dead, so how do you uh, restart a pause that was originally, was originally running the node to other nodes, basically bring certain kind of uh, scheduling capability in the, in the edge side. So we are still coming up with the design and I wish we have some solution ready in the coming release. <laughs> Awesome, because you really don't want to have to roll out a truck to that edge. It drives up the cost of IoT Edge. And cool. And I'm super excited you're like integrating with EdgeX Foundry because I worked on it. So, <laughs> <laughs> Yin, would you please go next? Uh, yeah, it's a little different from uh, Open Yard. So, Kube Edge, uh, at the very beginning, we fully integrated with these IoT applications. So, we have this called a device. Uh, controller is a CRD controller. We can you can can control the device. Uh, use device shadowing, uh, digital twins to control your device from the central cloud, and we have built in MQTT and other protocols. And there's other community contributors contribute more uh, protocols, and we are also looking for potential uh, communication or collaboration with Ajax 
so we can uh, in fully integrate the, another community with more support. So in our roadmap, one of the important feature we are looking for is the st strength, I mean, Titan or the security from the edge. Currently we have the uh, registration certificates, but I think uh, we think uh, in the future, because naturally the edge node is distributed uh, into the outside the world on the remote side, you don't have control. It's much easier to be hacked than the normal uh, cloud node. So we say we need to uh, looking for more secure edge node protections. That's one. The other one is currently Kube Edge treat edge node individually. Each node uh, run as a worker node and only talk to the uh, control plane. However, if it's a couple or a few edge node, they group together. We are looking for how we can cluster them together to uh, have a better uh, resource Resiliency. utilization and HA yeah. solutions. Another thing I want to share is our community is growing bigger and bigger. We, I mean, set up a few SIGs, uh, IoT SIG, AI SIG. So they treat different problems. As uh, I think Faye mentioned, if the AI application, it could be a batch processing and the common and go, and how do you uh, uh, treat uh, the data set and the models. So so they have a different focus, but for the IoT SIG, it's more focusing on the Kubernetes with IoT devices, so more protocols and more user cases. So uh, we are we really excited. So if you are interested, so please join our community to have this discussion. Uh, also, you know, with uh, this is project I was working with at Stanford and they're looking at distributed energy resources and their security is so important because if you have access power of, from your photovoltaics, you want to give it back to the grid and you do not want to disrupt your power supply. So I'm excited that y'all are working on more security and, and I'll connect you up with them later. Thank uh, you. Dohan? Yeah, so currently K3S is just for Linux. So I know that there's some work going to be done to make it compatible with Windows OS. So it's possible to install it in Windows. Uh, another thing is currently when you install K3S, the default CNI that's the container network interface is Flannel. There is work being done to support Maltus as well. And then another thing I want to add is uh, when you install K3S currently, it uses SQLite as the database. But uh, some work is being done, experimental, though some work is being done to see if it's possible to migrate your data from SQLite to um, etcd. Cool. Any other? Uh, for uh, Kubernetes, since Kubernetes is uh, basically their purview is the cloud, but it would be nice to see uh, resource consumption re uh, reduction work done in the community that way it uh, better supports the ed use case in particular uh cubelet resource consumption uh, reduction so yeah it's more like uh will be nice to see then work that's actually being done and maybe vmware can drive that so you know <laughs> as we start looking at more edge applications Thank you so much, everyone, for sharing with me what your roadmap is bringing. And I'm sure our audience was super excited to hear that. So to wrap up, I'd like to say that, you know, Kubernetes is successful. That's why everybody's choosing its API. It's super nice to see that, you know, K3S, OpenYERT, and CubeEdge are all leveraging that popular API and trying to bring their strengths. I Absolutely appreciate that y'all, especially, you know, CubeEdge and OpenYert are looking at the fact that we can't assume strong continuous network connectivity. So both of your designs kind of wrap around that, take into consideration that we might lose connectivity and still operate autonomously. And I'm also very excited that you have thoughts around how we handle these device profiles at this edge, you know, whether it's through digital twins, whether it's through another project. So I hope all of you got a sense of which, which flavor you'd like to select. And thank you so much for attending and we'll be open for a few questions.
questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.